everybody, it's Friday night and I just got done watching 1984's The Terminator starring Linda Hamilton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Michael Binn and Paul Winfield. Um, this one, oh my god, I've seen this so many times. Not as many as the sequel, but uh, yeah, and let's face it, what can I say about this movie that has not been said already? You know what? Total Recall, not people not seeing Total Recall was one thing, but not knowing, even, <laughs> you probably know the plot even without having seen it. Uh, it's one of those things that is so well rooted in pop culture now. Uh, it's, you know, <laughs> basically uh, a, a cyborg uh, Terminator uh, from 2029 gets sent back to kill uh, the mother of uh, who uh, uh, the mother of who will become essentially the savior of mankind in the future, um, uh, Sarah Connor. Except uh, uh, the Terminator doesn't know the exact uh, details and name of her, so it essentially goes through the phone book. Um, meanwhile. Uh, a, a guy sent by Sarah's son, uh, uh, by John Connor, uh, Kyle Reese, is also sent back and the uh, uh, time machine is uh, destroyed so that nobody else can uh, be sent. And he's sent to protect Sarah and to uh, get rid of the Terminator so that John can be born, etc. And we find out later, actually impregnate Sarah so that John can be born. Um, which then does make you kind of question the whole, I mean, essentially, if the Terminator doesn't get sent back, then Sarah doesn't get impregnated with John and, and this and the other. So even even Sarah says it at the end, you know, where if, if you start thinking about it, you can go crazy. Um, but it's basically uh, the Terminator play, of course, by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, it's his hunt for Sarah and, and um, you know, Kyle trying to protect her. Uh, Kyle played by Michael Biehn, of course. Um, and unfortunately, uh, uh, it's, it's one of those things where, as I said in Total Recall, Arnold Schwarzenegger, not, you know, the greatest of actors and stuff like that. But in this, he is so well suited because all he has to do is glare. It's funny because everybody quotes, I'll be back um, and stuff like that. Personally, I prefer the end, uh, the line at the end uh, where Sarah, played by Linda Hamilton, goes, you're terminated, fucker. Um, personally, I prefer that because I'll be back. It's just like, yeah, whatever. But of course, everybody uh, does that line. Um, you know, Arnie barely talks in the whole movie. All he does is stare. But he has this presence. Um, and it's just, it's its brilliantly done. Um, I don't think anybody in this is poorly cast or that. Um, I feel bad for poor Lance Henriksen who gets killed. And I'm sorry, anybody killing Lance Henriksen in a movie is just wrong um, and even worse is uh, there's this scene you you get flashbacks every now and then to the future to see Kyle's existence and and how nasty you know these machines taking over is and um, there's these uh, dogs uh, Gemma Shepherd's predominantly um, and as a Gemma Shepherd lover you know I'm totally there um, but uh, dogs are used to detect because these uh, Terminators uh, can, um, the cyborgs, they have human uh, skin uh, tissue uh, covering their kind of metallic uh, uh, skeleton. And um, this Terminator gets in and stuff and the dogs go berserk and the Terminator starts killing everybody in this kind of shanty area. And it doesn't kill the dog. And I was like ready to celebrate the fact that the Terminators didn't kill dogs. And it turned its gun on the dog and I was just like, fuck you, Terminators. Uh, it's one of those pet peeves, especially in games recently. There seems to be this love of killing 
dogs for some reason. I'm just like, why? Stop it! I cannot deal with stuff that tells me to kill dogs. Um, so, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know what? My only problems with this movie, there are some con continuity issues. Um, the, uh, several, several Sarah Connors are killed and um, we're shown several times the phone book and we get a Sarah Ann Connor and a Sarah Louise Connor and one of the offers specifically says oh they were order in the phone book except we see on every single time we see the phone book that actually there's a Sarah Jane Connor and it's like well technically they're not in order uh, the um the, the, the makeup effects in this are brilliant uh, and the puppetry robotics etc um, but it is uh, it's one of those things especially in movies of this time where when they show uh, somebody in a mask to then do you know puppetry underneath it looks really fake and you have this scene where you see uh, Arnie looking in the mirror where he's he takes his eye out which definitely makes me squeamish um, and there's this mask on and he's moving very robotically which is really weird because he doesn't do it for the rest of the movie um, even when even when they're showing just this uh, you know uh, uh, metal skeleton moving around even that doesn't move particularly jarringly uh, but when this person has the mask on um, it's it's moving very jumpily and it's really distracting and it looks very false but again, this is 1984, and I think the point is, is this movie was made at a time where, you know, compu computers were becoming so much more, uh, you know, uh, so much better. We had game consoles in the house and stuff like that. Technology had advanced so much in like the last 10 years or so that this came at a time when it would be believable that you know technology within 40 years would take over the world and i mean we're only at 2014 at the moment and you know what i would not be even remotely surprised that in the next 15 years uh technology has gained sentient uh, being <laughs> and that sounds really silly but even you know i've been talking to friends and stuff about how far we've come even with just the games consoles um if you were told me 10 years ago, uh, or oh, even more than 10 years ago, um, you know, back playing the PS1 or the PS2, if you told me then what we are able to do with computer, with, you know, the PS4 and stuff like that now, I would have just gone, yeah, right. <laughs> and, and that is the case. It's a lot of stuff that we take for granted and we don't realise how far we've come. And I think that's why when I watch stuff like uh, the uh, the Fine Brothers' uh, React channel, where I see these kids or teenagers reacting to technology that I had when I was a kid, and they're like, how did you live? And it's like, yeah, but it was what we had then. And that's the thing with this movie is you look at the effects, you look at the, you know, puppet stop motion puppetry and stuff like that. And for its time, it was amazing. Amazing. It was cutting edge, uh, you know, technology and stuff like that. Of course, we'll touch more on that when I get to Terminator 2 tomorrow. Um, but, you know, this is a movie uh, brilliantly done by James Cameron back when he, you know, his ego didn't get in the way. Um, you know, and this should be the kind of basis for showing to... to modern directors like Michael Bay etc that you don't constantly need explosions to get somebody's attention uh, there are some amazing car chases uh, and and so much tension when when even like I say that you have this um, the famous score uh, you know this doo -doo 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 -doo, you know just that drum beat kind of thing um, it's so tense building and you know you see the Terminator turn up at the police station where Sarah Connor is and stuff like that and and as that beat goes you can feel yourself going you know you know she's gonna get out for goodness sakes I mean yeah like I say you end up in this because of the 
cycle that exists, you know that she must get out and stuff. I mean, my God, I mean, that would kind of suck if, you know, the, 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 the protagonist died. Um, you know, that's not what movies are about. Um, but you still feel that tension. And another thing that this movie does is, you know, Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor is the last person. We're not talking about, like, Ripley and Aliens or anything like that. We're talking about the least likely person you can imagine being, you know, the saviour of the humankind. And I think that's the important, you know, as we said, it's a shame because back in the 80s, 90s and that, we saw a surge of strong female characters. Um, and... Sarah Connor in this movie, so different from the sequel, um, you see the beginnings, you see that a, 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 a purportedly weak person can become something so much more. Um, and I think that's something that I've always fought for as a disabled person, just going, look what I can do, um, and look what women can do. And and like I say, you see this character and you... and. It's different for me because I've seen the sequels, um, but to see even her strength at the end, as kind of cheesy as it is, um, it, it's really kind of uh, inspiring. Um, the other pet peeve I have is at the end, you clearly see the Terminator explode into bits, um, and then magically the whole top half of the torso has survived and can crawl after Sarah. She crawls through this machine and she successfully finds the exact correct button to make this press come down. And I know it's a really silly nitpick, but it really distracts me. Um, just as much as the whole phone book thing did. Uh, that one really bugged me, the whole movie. Um, but this is a brilliant movie. It's a brilliant action movie. Um, and and it's, it's just really enjoyable. And I could rave about this movie for ages, be it taking it apart and examining all the different layers and stuff. I mean, when you, when you give a summary, it sounds like a really basic storyline. I mean, my God, the, the stories of robots taking over is not exactly something new. Uh, even by 1984 standards. But it, it, there's so much more depth to it. I mean, if I just go, oh, you know, Cyborg is sent back to kill a woman uh, and somebody else comes through to protect her. That sounds really basic. Um, but this is, what, uh, an hour and 30, an hour and 40 minutes long? Um, yeah, so, yeah, hour and 40 minutes long. Um, and it feels like a lot more happens. Sometimes you do get a little repetition with a lot of the chases. But again, that's because you need time for the relationship between uh, Reese and Sarah to progress. Uh, to the point where then, because this guy, he's grown up, you know, being taught by John and stuff. And he's kind of idolised Sarah. And then he gets to meet her. And he's put on him to protect her. And he's, you know, all he's ever done, he's loved her kind of thing. So you need her to join him on this journey kind of thing. And it's nice that it shows that she completely doesn't believe it at the beginning. Um, but by the end, she does. Uh, like I say, I could go on about this movie forever. I really enjoy it. I could easily give you a review of the second one now without actually watching it. But I won't do that. I just know I really enjoy that one probably more than this one um but i'll see when i rewatch that tomorrow um but this is a lot of fun and it starts a good franchise um and it's an excellent story i mean they're doing uh next year we've got terminator genesis coming um so i don't know what that's going to be like but uh it, it's just one of those stories like i say has become so much of pop culture but anyway, please, I would easily, easily give this an 8 to 9 out of 10. It's difficult because, like I say, I know the sequel, and I know I'm probably going to give that a 9 out of 10. Um, so I kind of don't want to give this a 9 out of 10, 
but there's so little wrong with this um, and I enjoy it so much I would even easily let's say 8.5 out of 10 uh, it's really good if you like your sci-fi movies if you like your kind of drama thriller kind of uh, stuff um, please if you haven't already for whatever reason do check out 1984's The Terminator uh, I'll be back tomorrow with uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Uh, but for now, this is Sketch, signing out.